Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo Cunny Corso. So I've got, got a female that's going home today and she trying to make me dizzy. <laughs> I told them I would leash trade them, leash trade her before she leaves. And she's decided that she's gonna leash train herself. And she's going to use this thing <laughs> like a tug toy. Um, which I guess is better than a lot of Corso that um, basically try to act like a fish on a hook. So she thinks it's a game. Right now, I'm going to kind of let her... I'm not engaging with her. I'm not, I'm not doing the tug thing at all. I just took some tape off of her ear. So, um, so anyway, but I'm not... Yeah, she's been trying to spin me in circles. I ain't doing that no more. So what I'm not going to do is really engage with her. I'm not pulling. I'm just kind of holding on to the leash. And just kind of letting her do her thing for a moment. Because she's very clearly... She's not afraid. Um, let her go around. Um, let her go around again. I think she can see me in the... God, my shadow looks way fatter than me. Dang. Talk about the camera adding 10 pounds. Shadow is a hater. Um, all right, so because she's not afraid, let her do another loop real quick. Um, hopefully she'll get bored of it in a second. We're just gonna see. I'm just gonna maintain my calmness, maintain my, my hand on the leash. Um, try to keep her in front of me. Um, and in a second, we're just going to kind of feel it out. Now, this is, on that note, on the feel it out note, one of the things I want to talk about is um, I, had a, I had a customer, a potential customer of mine, and he was talking about, um, psh, ah, psh, quit. Psh. Um, he was talking about, um, psh, quit. Um, psh. So I'm going to start getting onto her about a little bit. Psh, ah, psh, psh. No. Shh. Ah, ah. Quit. Hold on. <clears throat> Shh. I had to use my foot. Um, so the reason that I got onto her for it is because she's not afraid. And because she's not afraid, I'm not afraid. Ah, sh sh no. Okay. I'm not afraid of communicating sh with her that I don't like that. Um, if she was afraid, then I wouldn't do that. Usually what I do, and you guys have seen me do this before. Come here. Come in. So I don't like to put too much pressure because the first time she's ever had a leash on. Um, so normally I don't, um, what I'll do. So there's a little bit of resistance there, but she's all right. She's a good girl. She's not, um, she's not like freaking out. Um, anyway, so. People have asked me why I don't write a book. And there's this guy and he, you know, he was like, he was like, I'm going to do it all right. I'm going to buy this guy's book and da, 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 how to train my dog. And I've tried to tell you guys before, um, and I want to take this as an opportunity to reiterate that really and truthfully, you can't write a book on dog training. Um, and I think this is a prime example. Um, now, It's a hard one because like, can you, can you write a book on, let's say how to teach a dog to sit? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, but what I will tell you is that it's, it's going to be extremely limited because for example, right, this female, okay. Could I write a book that says, all right, you put the collar on the dog and then you see how the dog reacts, you know, um, you know, as you guys have seen, I always tell people, don't try to, don't try to, ah, sh drop it. Sh no, no. Um, you know, don't try to lead the dog around yet. You know what I mean? Just try to get the dog okay with having the collar on or the leash on. Okay. Yeah. All of that. Yes. But for example, this female, um, she didn't try to, you know, freak out, but she did grab the leash and knowing when to get on to the dog for grabbing on the leash, psh, takes 
being there. It takes seeing the dog. It takes understanding. You know what I mean? Like I was able to recognize that, you know, there's two things she was doing by grabbing the leash. One, she was taking control of the situation by, you know, she, she, she doesn't want to be, you know, uh, choked or whatever. Right. So she's going to grab it. And then she's, but simultaneously she wanted to play with it. Um, and so I have to have my knowledge of knowing of like, if I would have tried to get onto her immediately, that would have been too much pressure. Okay. It was too new of a thing and she went right to it. That's the problem. You know what I mean? Just, ah. Um, and so knowing how much to let her get away with, like right now, pulling her back, she was doing circles around me. Right. But now knowing that I could put that pressure on her to turn her back around, it takes, it takes knowing it. First of all, it takes experience. It takes intuition. Psh, um, and, uh, and being able to look at this individual dog and judge based upon her individual self, how best to work with her. And that's just something you can't put in a book. So would it be very easy for me to, you know, smash something out for you guys, you know what I mean? And make a book real quick. Sure. I could, but, um, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night because ultimately I don't like, I don't like doing things that lack integrity and I'm not trying to crap on anybody else who does write a book, but, um, you know, the reality of the situation is, is that dogs are not a one size fits all. They are unique individuals, even within their own breeds. And the idea that you could ever do a one size fits all training for a dog is just, it's just not true. You can't do it. And the only people that I've ever seen that have really ever tried to do that kind of stuff um, are people that, from what I've seen, are not real dog trainers. Um, they're people that are profiting, profiting off of the fact that a lot of people have lost this like knowledge that we had um, of how to work with dogs. I mean, heck, we used to know how to raise children too, and a lot of people can't do that anymore either. So... Um, you know, it's a thing. I don't know. It's like, it's like lost knowledge. The farther we get away from, um, our more natural state of being of living with animals and farming and all of that stuff, the more it seems that people lose the ability to work with animals. Um, and so with her, um, as you can see, see, she's trying to run me around in a circle. Psh, ah, ah, quit. Um, and so she's, uh, what I'm basically doing right here is I'm judging, I'm, I'm being firm, but not too firm. As you see, I'm not trying to walk her around. I'm not trying to lead her. The reason why is because I know that if I immediately start trying to pull her around, it's, she's going to freak out. She's going to go back to the pulling thing. And I don't want that right now. I just very much want her to accept being on the leash and really get to the point where it doesn't even matter. Once it doesn't matter anymore, then I can start to do things with her. She already feels it like right there whenever she went to walk and she could feel the collar and she didn't have any response there. I like that better. Boom. There we go. Good. She didn't immediately go to put it in her mouth again like she did last time. The last time when she did a jump, she felt the pressure. She went to grab it. Um, didn't want that, right? There's a fight going on. So right here, just going to let her have this moment and I'm going to judge based upon what she does. All right. So she had that moment, kind of freaked out a little bit. She didn't grab for it, but that's fine. She recognizes that it's not trying to hurt her. She doesn't like her um, her movement limit, you know, limited, but that's fine. She accepted it pretty well. There's a good yawn. Let some energy out right there. I'm just going to let her sit with it for a second. So that was good. Now that she's distracted, I'm going to move back a little bit. Come in. Not going to see. You see she put the brakes on. She's bracing. That's fine. I'm going to stay where I am see if she can give way without pulling too much. I don't want to get into a big argument with her. Boom. There we go. All right. She gave it a fight. Then she relented and she came over to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her some love. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Because she did do that. She did what I wanted her to do. I'm going to give her some affection. We're going to move over here. Come on. Come on, baby girl. There. Good girl. Good girl. She did what I wanted her to do. So I'm going to give her some love. You need your affection. Yeah. Good girl. So I feel like I pushed her a little bit to her limit right this second. So I am going to stop. I'm going to give her a moment. If I keep pulling, 
I might get more resistance and I don't want that. So it's a give and a take. And um, I don't want to get into this power struggle with her where she's fighting me or I'm fighting her. My, my, my main goal, good girl, good girl, is to avoid that. And she was ready for the fight right there. That's what she was doing. She was bracing for a fight. If I would have pulled her, she would have fought. No point in that. I didn't fight with her. Tail is wagging. That's good. Energy is good. She came to me giving her affection. Good girl. Sweet baby girl. Yes, you are. You're a sweet baby girl. You're just sweetie. She's kind of caught up. Let me get that foot out from underneath there. Oh, nope. I didn't get it. Hold on. There we go. All right. Good. So now look at that. Look at that. Now she's following me. Because I was good to her, because she realized that I'm not trying to fight with her, um, because I'm giving her affection, she's more willing to not put the brakes on. Good girl, yeah! And look at that, fantastic. Yes, you're fantastic. She came very easily just then. I like that. When she saw that I wasn't trying to fight with her, and now, as you can see, I walked away, I didn't have to say anything to her, and she followed. Good girl, good girl. Good girl. Look at that. See? Coming right along. Good girl. So with that affection, now she's getting a little excited. She's wanting to jump on me. So I'm going to get onto her for that because I don't want her jumping on me. Come on. See? So because I gave her a little bit of a correction, there's some pause and that's fine. We're having ourselves a little moment here. I put up a boundary <laughs> that I didn't like something. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her lead just a little bit, um, because it's not important that I win every single moment right now. I really want this to be a pleasurable experience for her and I don't want to put too much pressure on her. So I'm going to allow her to kind of lead the way a little bit. That's fine. Not a big deal. <clears throat> and I just want her, like I said, to just get to the point where she's fine with being on the leash. If she starts trying to push me around or like what we just saw where she tries to um some dogs will do a thing where they try to spin you around in circles and I don't have any desire to become dizzy right now so I am gonna now that she knows that she's on a leash she's okay with being on a leash that's why I'm going ah, why I went ahead um and I did put some resistance on whenever she tried to do me a loop around because she knows that she's not in any danger. So I can apply a little bit more pressure because I know that there's not going to be a misunderstanding on what that pressure means. Her life is not in danger. Come on, Gemma. Good girl. Come on. So here we have a moment. She's being stubborn. That's fine. Now this is a time if she doesn't come, I am going to put some pressure because she knows. So here we go. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to zoom out a bit for you. Good girl. And all of that takes, it takes years of knowledge. I'm just going to be honest with you. Knowing how to do that takes years of knowledge. Come on. Of knowing how much pressure. Good girl. Come on. Of how much pressure I can put on this dog. Recognizing her, her signals, all of that kind of stuff is really important. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. So now I'm walking this way and she's walking. Come on. And I want to try to keep up, keep a little bit of, um, I want to try to keep some momentum going right now because I want her to understand that ultimately the, the point of this collar <clears throat> and leash is so that she and I can move together in unison. Oh, there's, look at that. There's some stubbornness there. Come in. Good girl. Um, so... It's kind of like, for me, and it's a, it's a very similar thing that I always talk about, is once a dog understands the concept of something, I then comes in obedience. And a lot of people don't know what obedience is. They think that obedience is just getting a dog to perform a behavior no matter how you get them to do it. But for me, it's not that. Psst, ah, drop it. Psst. No. Good girl. We don't want her, even though it's cute, we don't want dogs that walk themselves. Um... And so, um, obedience, to be obedient means to do what you're told to do it when you're told to do it. It does not mean that you do something when you get something out of it, okay? Um, we are not obedient in the workplace. <laughs> we do a good job. 
we're team players, but we're not obedient to our bosses. Um, when I want a dog to be obedient, when I think of obedience, it is, um, it is a form of subservience. You are doing what I tell you to do because I told you to do it, not because you get anything out of it. And, um, and so that's what I'm wanting out of her. Come on. Put it down. Good girl. So whenever I ask her to come with me after she already knows what I want her to do, um, it's because I want her to be obedient and there's nothing, there's no treat. There's no nothing you do. You come with me because you were asked to come with me. Now in the, in the beginning, when she doesn't understand what the collar is for, she can't be obedient because, you know, she doesn't even understand what's happening. But once we have the understanding, once we have grasped the concept, you do what I tell you to do, period, end of story. If I tell you to sit, you put your butt on the ground. Not because there's a treat involved, not because we're partners and we're friends, but because I told you to. That's why I dropped the leash. Um, and so that's what I'm asking her to do right now. And as you can see, she's doing fantastic. It took me all of 16 minutes. And I would say that she was a little bit more stubborn than some. Um, not, not, like, not, sh- 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 ah, drop it. Psst, Gemma, good girl. Um, so communicating with her when I don't like something, um, rewarding her when I do like something. And, you know, people often get into this whole positive reinforcement thing, but the reality of the situation is, is that there is some positive reinforcement in here. The positive reinforcement is that I am positive when she does something that I like, when she's being good, I'm positive with her. I give her affection when she does something I don't like. There is a, um, negative reinforcement in the, in the sense of, you know, I make that sound, my energy changes and I get onto her. Um, and that's the only real positive reinforcement that I tend to give. That's not to say that I never do any kind of good girl. That's, that's not to say that I never do any type of treat training. It really depends on the dog. There are some dogs that, um, they want to shut down so bad that you have to get their brain out of it. And you have to get them to become a willing participant. But like I said, once they understand, psh, ah, ah, good girl. Once they understand, I expect obedience. Um, so anyway, this girl's about to go home. <laughs> the transport's about to pick her up. I had promised the owners that I would leash train her. That's This is me doing that right this second. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I'm like, yeah, it'll take me about 15 minutes um, now you'll have, they'll have to work on all the tuning up, right? Making sure that she's healing all of that kind of stuff. But you know, the general, um, you know, the general information is here and I will make sure to instruct them on not allowing her to walk herself, even though it's cute. And we all know it's cute dogs walking themselves on the leash is we don't do that. Okay. Um, she is on the wrong side for the way that this collar is uh, meant to be used, but that's fine. Let's go. But she's doing really good. Good girl. Good girl. She's no longer freaking out about the concept of the leash. She gets it now. And that's what I mean by understanding the concept. And now that's why I don't hesitate on having her do what I asked her to do if I walk a certain way. And like tomorrow, if she was my dog, you know, the next day, like we would end on this positive note. What I would typically do at this time is take off the leash um, which I will do and just kind of allow her to run around a bit, be a dog, be happy, right? Um, all's well that ends well. So, um, now she's interested in the leash. Psh, ah, no, it's not a toy. Okay. Very important. That you not let the dog play with something that's not a toy. It's not a toy. She can't play with it. I'm going to have it down by my hand or down, down low, and I'm going to expect her not to grab it. If she does, I'll correct her. She can smell it. It was on her. She may need, she may want to understand it a little bit more. Okay, tail wag walked away. That's good. So it's not a toy. Um, I don't want her to, to associate it with a toy, but I do want her to associate it with a good time. A lot of dogs know. No. So she's trying to jump up at it. Don't want that. 
She's already smelled it. And that's what I'm saying. The concept is already there. She's already smelled it. She know what it is. It's not a toy. She's very playful. Um, now me, I'm the type, I don't, I don't want to deal with overly playful puppies. Um, that's not something that I encourage, not in my home. I'm not working her, so there's no reason for me to. Um, I want, you know, I run a pack of dogs. I need my dogs to be calm and, uh, and play well with each other. So encouraging excitement is not something that I typically will do. But, you know, somebody else that's got her, you know, they may want to play ball, may want to play frisbee, whatever. She'd be a great dog for that. Um, you know, she's playful. She's happy. That's good. What you doing, Gemma? <whistles> Gemma, what are you doing? Where are you trying to go? You good girl, Gemma. You good girl. Yes, hello. You good girl, sweetie. Yes, you are. You're sweetie. You're sweetie. As you saw, I had the leash in my hand. She didn't go for it. I consider that an improvement. <whistles> Now, I'm not going to, I think that when I reached my hand out like that, I think that she thought that I was offering it to her. That was just a misunderstanding between the two of us. So I took my hand away. Otherwise, I could have been reversing what I've been teaching her, that this is a toy. So I had to move it away. Psh, get out of that poop. Good girl. Um, so anyway, everything is down to pressure and relieving pressure. She does something wrong. I do that sound. Um... You know, my energy changes a little bit. I get a little bit more firm. And then as soon as she stops, I'm happy. I move on. Everything's good. And it's just a very easy way of communicating to her. I either like what you're doing or I don't like what you're doing. And, um, and her being a dog, being a pack animal, wanting to, be, wanting to um, work well in the pack means that, um, means that she... Good. She did very good. Very good. See? See, I was petting her with it. I was testing her a little bit petting her a little bit with it. I had it in her face and she just, she ignored it. She immediately went away. She knew that's not a toy. It's good. I like that. We move on. And literally I would say by one more training, she, Oh, watch out, hun. Um, by one more training, she probably won't even try to go for the, the leash anymore. So long as the owner, um, maintains and reinforces that. And I'm glad that I'm doing this video for them so that they can see the way in which she has been corrected thus far. Gemma, what you doing? <whistles> Gemma! Gemma, 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 Gemma! She wants water. It's kind of warm out here. It's been like chilly, and now it's kind of toasty. Gemma! Good girl, yes! Look, she knows her name. Gemma! Very smart dogs. Very smart dogs. Gemma! Look at that movement. Fantastic. That's such a great litter. That saffron and grim litter, they've gotten just better and better and better with time. No question about it. Better and better and better. But anyway, she wants some water, so I'm going to get her some water, but just wanted to get this video out for you guys, let you kind of see what I'm doing and good girl and why it is that I do not believe in, um, in training books. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've never read one. Um, I've never, I've never once ever been able to give advice to somebody that was a one size fits all for a dog. You could ask me a hundred questions. I've had people do it. Why does my dog nip at me? How do I get my dog to stop biting me? How do I, you know, whatever X, Y, Z it's going to have to do with that individual dog with their individual personality in every given moment of how you handle that. Do I apply more pressure? Do I let go of pressure? Do I redirect? All of that stuff is going to be down to the situation and the dog. And that's not something you can write in a book. So anyway, hope that helps. Hope you're having a good day. And I'll talk at you later. Bye.